In the previous video in this series, called The Big Lie, um, I pointed out how an excessively rosy view of the world can actually end up being toxic in that it can um, lead to a certain amount of overcompensation. People see that the world is being fed to them as a wonderful place and that everything is just happy, happy, joy, joy, but they see around them evidence that it is not. So you end up um, overcompensating and going too far into the pessimistic realm, um, which is kind of ironic because optimism is not supposed to lead to pessimism. Uh, having a rosy view of things is not supposed to lead to having a bleak view of things, but inevitably it does. You're, you're not realistic, and something in your mind seeks equilibrium when it looks at the outside world. So you see the smiling face of the politician, or the leave it to beavers, or uh, that sort of thing, and something in your head says, no, 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 that's not right. There's got to be bad things here. In other words, we seek the light, but the darkness seeks us. Uh, so, of course, yes, um, excessive optimism breeds pessimism. Excessive optimism breeds um, a, uh, a bleak worldview, a sterile worldview. Um, excessive reason can actually lead to all kinds of crazy things, too. Um, one of the examples that I give of excessive reason and excessive rely reliance on pure logic uh, is the antinatalist argument. Um, only, that, only those which exist can be harmed. Harm is bad, therefore existence is bad, therefore let's get existence out of existence. I understand that. I, I see the, the logic behind it. The problem with that is, though, that's excessive logic. That's excessive reason. I always approach logic from the point of view, uh, or from um, using the approach of my great hero, I do have heroes, yes, Socrates, of course. Because Socrates had a withering um, intellect, extremely clear, and very logical, very reasonable, relentlessly logical and re reasonable as a matter of fact, but it was always tempered by a somewhat evil sense of humor. You could almost see him pulling everybody's leg when he, uh, when he asked them his um, relentless series of questions on their beliefs. Um, that, to me, makes reason more reasonable. What is the point of reducing existence to a series of mathematical formulas when we know that there are other things out there, such as humor? Why do we want to do that? Uh, it is not reasonable to be too, uh, uh, to be too obsessed with reason. It doesn't make sense. Um, which, of course, is Meden Agan. I mentioned Gnothi Seothon in the other video, the first of Apollo's great um, aphorisms to humanity. The second one is Meden Agan, which um, often is translated all things in moderation, but I, I prefer to see it as nothing in excess. Don't take anything to excess. If you take a certain type of reason to excess, then you end up um, in horrible logical blind alleys or traps even, like antinatalism. Um, it's a di very difficult uh, thing to debunk antinatalism, hence the fact that I'm, I've made 40, um, 40 videos on it, but antinatalism and depression. Uh, depression is also a very difficult thing to debunk, which is also why I've done so many videos on it. Um, it can be done if you actually want to do it. Uh, if you ask me, people who go f seek out depression often want the depression for the reasons that I've outlined. They seek out too much light, therefore the darkness follows them, then they soon learn to seek out the dark, and they find themselves in the dark, but the light follows them anyway when they realize how the fact that they've actually made an error in their thinking that has led them to this uh, depressive cul-de-sac. So, yes, nothing in excess. Absolutely nothing in excess. Excessive logic, excessive reason, excessive rationality is not good for you. There's such a thing as too much of anything. Thank you.